The blood, sweat and tears that go into creating a successful TV show is basically unfathomable. It requires hundreds of artists and technicians working together on the same page to execute the showrunner's vision. And there are so, so many things that can go wrong. Perhaps a major character isn't cast right, maybe a slight aspect of the story doesn't work, or it's just lacking the special source that truly grips audiences from the very first episode. However, because someone involved with the production recommended a tweak to the proposed format, these ten shows secured their futures, providing each series with a secret ingredient they so desperately desperately needed. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 TV shows that were saved by one genius tweak. Number 10. Adding Danny DeVito in Season 2. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Though It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was well received by critics in its first season, that wasn't reflected in its ratings. Network FX effectively offered creator Rob McElhaney an ultimatum. Add a big name cast member for season 2 or the show would be cancelled. In a 2015 interview with the Nerdist podcast, McElhaney explained that the president of FX told him that the studio wanted to keep the show on air despite its low ratings, but with no money for marketing, the next best thing was to add a known name with some panache to draw in viewers. McElhaney initially rejected the notion of adding a famous actor to the ensemble, but after it became clear the show wouldn't be returning without one, he relented. And as great as the show's rough around the edges first season was, bringing Danny DeVito aboard as Dennis and Dee's father Frank Reynolds was an absolute masterstroke. DeVito remains responsible for many of the series' most hilarious and unforgettable moments, effectively serving as the glue that holds the main cast together, all while keeping the network happy. Given that It's Always Sunny was recently renewed up to its 18th season, it was absolutely the right call. Number 9. Not casting Stephen Van Zandt as Tony Soprano, The Sopranos. It's basically impossible to imagine anyone but the late great James Gandolfini portraying The Sopranos' iconic mobster protagonist Tony Soprano, yet if creator David Chase got his way, things would have gone quite differently. According to Stephen Van Zandt, who went on to play Tony's right-hand man Silvio Dante, he was Chase's original choice to play Tony. Despite having no acting experience and being best known as a member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, Chase handpicked him for the part. In Van Zandt's own words, Chase wanted unusual new faces and he really thought I could do it, and out of pure ignorance and naivety, I thought I could do it too. However, HBO wouldn't let him, and needless to say, it was the right call. Chase then ended up writing the Silvio role specifically for Van Zant, and as perfect as he was in the role, his lack of acting experience and on-screen demeanour would have made him so, so wrong for Tony. By switching him out for James Gandolfini, the show's greatness was ensured. Had HBO allowed Van Zant front and centre, it's tough to imagine The Sopranos being quite the same show, or being nearly as captivating out of the gate. Number 8. Rewriting NoHo Hank's Fate, Barry it took just a single episode of Bill Hader's incredible black comedy series Barry for viewers to realise that Chechen mobster Noho Hank was an attention-grabbing breakout character. Throughout the show's three seasons to date, Hank has been the show-stealing fan favourite, his quirky demeanour and hilarious interactions with Barry ingeniously subverting the far-flung mobster archetype. Yet Hank was very nearly a single-episode character who died in the pilot, as it wasn't until the episode had been filmed that Hader and co-creator Alec Berg truly appreciated just how much of an asset he could be. Hader said in a 2019 Uprock's interview that whilst it was the original plan to kill Hank off, Berg changed his mind as Carrigan's performance was so damn funny. Hank is such an integral, outstanding component of the ensemble cast that it's tough to imagine the show hitting the same highs without him. And for his efforts, Carrigan has received two outstanding Supporting Actor Emmy nominations. Number 7. Spending $10 million to reshoot the terrible pilot episode, Game of Thrones. Though it quickly became a global phenomenon, Game of Thrones very nearly faltered before it even got going. HBO originally commissioned a pilot episode to be shot in 2009, which during an initial preview screening was poorly received by the cast, crew and executives in attendance. Ultimately, after four months of deliberation, the studio agreed to greenlight an entire season's worth of episodes, but only if the pilot was reshot, resulting in some changes in the cast and crew. Factoring in the reshoots, HBO ended up spending an estimated eye-watering $10 million on the first episode alone accounting for approximately 20% of the first season's budget. The unaired pilot has since taken on a mythical status in the Thrones fandom, while franchise creator George R. R. Martin has joked that he's under penalty of death if he ever shows it to anyone. Given that Game of Thrones pilot was pivotal in the show's future success and the creation of a wider media empire, HBO was smart to invest more money in getting things right straight away, rather than hoping they could smooth the pilot's problems out in subsequent episodes. First impressions count for a lot, after all. Number 6. Making Sheldon Asexual – The Big Bang Theory 
Not entirely unlike Game of Thrones, The Big Bang Theory went through a tricky development period whereby creators Chuck Law and Bill Prady had their first attempt at a pilot, which eventually found its way online, rejected by CBS. And yet the network saw enough promise in the concept to give them a second chance. The second, ultimately successful pilot was markedly different, including introducing Penny to the group dynamic, but perhaps the single smartest change was drastically reworking the character of Sheldon Cooper. In the first pilot, Sheldon was basically a horn dog, sexually active, frequently discussing his masturbatory habits and fetishes, and also a relatively social human being. But Sheldon was made into the near opposite in the second pilot, basically asexual and socially awkward, which ultimately made him such an endearing and eventually iconic character. It's easy to imagine how horny Sheldon could have been incredibly grating in the long run, and potentially have ensured the show didn't age too well also. Number 5. HBO telling Alan Ball to make it more effed up. Six feet under. TV networks are notoriously risk-averse where challenging content is concerned, and even a company as seemingly permissive as HBO has its limits. Yet when Alan Ball, fresh off an Oscar win for writing American Beauty, submitted the script for Six Feet Under's pilot episode to the network, he got a surprising response. In Ball's own words from a 2000 interview with MovieWeb, certainly one of the most memorable moments was when I went to HBO and they had read my first draft and Carolyn Strauss said, you know what, this is really really good, I love these characters, I love these situations, but it feels a little safe. Could you just make it a little more f***ed up, which is not a note you get in Hollywood very often. It was Alan Ball's permission slip to go as deep and dark as he possibly wanted. Needless to say, from its very first episode, few would ever dare to call Six Feet Under safe. Its thoughtful confrontation of mortality, spiced with lashings of surrealism and black comedy, ensured it frequently lurched into effed up territory and was all the better for it. Number 4. Changing the oldest belt to child's gender, Bob's Burgers. Lauren Bouchard's original demo pilot for Bob's Burgers differed from the show proper in a number of ways, such as hinting that the Belcher family were cannibals, which Fox convinced Bolcher to nix, and assigning the oldest Belcher child a different gender. In the demo, we're introduced to a boy named Daniel, but by the time the show went to series, Daniel had been switched out for Tina. While superficially little actually changed about the character, she was still voiced by Dan Mintz and both looked and acted similarly, the gender swap led to Bob's Burgers ultimately offering up one of the most frank and hilarious depictions of an awkward teenage girl in sitcom history. It's also tough to deny that likely the show couldn't have gotten away with some of Tina's more eccentric behaviour were she a boy, where a hormonal Daniel constantly obsessing over his female classmates butts, it wouldn't hit quite the same way. Given that Tina is the show's MVP in the eyes of many fans, kicking Daniel to the curb was an extremely smart call. Number 3. Adding Q to the pilot at the last minute. Star Trek The Next Generation. There's no denying that the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation was quite the rocky ride indeed, but it very nearly faced even more of an uphill struggle retaining viewers if Trek creator Gene Roddenberry got his way. Originally, Roddenberry wrote an hour-long pilot for the show, but Paramount ultimately demanded a two-hour pilot, at which point Roddenberry had to find ways to pad out the story. And so he came up with Q, the interdimensional being who puts humanity on trial in the episode. Q's presence certainly helped imbue the relatively sleepy pilot with some much-needed energy, and the character proved enough of a hit that he he appeared numerous times throughout the Next Generation's run, cementing him as an all-time fan-favourite Trek character. Roddenberry clearly knew what he had when he came up with Q, because though other Trek writers suggested him that the character wouldn't work, he confidently retorted, the fans will love it. TNG is so much more than Q of course, but without the charismatic nudge he gave the show at the outset, who can say where it would have ended up? Number 2. Not Killing Jack in the Pilot. Lost. In an all-time classic example of executives making a smart call that arguably saved a show, or at least massively improved it, J.J. Abrams' original outline for Lost's pilot had protagonist Jack Shepard die halfway through the episode. Initially, Abrams and company planned to hire an A-list actor in the role, Michael Keaton was interested for a time, whose death would shock the audience and layer the remainder of the season with an air of unpredictability. However, network ABC strongly disagreed with the idea, feeling that it would simply piss invested audiences off, that a character so easily likeable as Jack was taken off the chessboard immediately. And so Jack was given a stay of execution, at which point Keaton departed the project, having no interest in committing to a larger part, and Matthew Fox was eventually cast as his replacement. Given that Jack quickly established himself as one of Lost's most potent characters, and enjoyed quite the complex arc throughout the show's run, it would have been a massive mistake to kill him at the outset. Number 1. Toning down the Rose's bitterness after Season 1. Shit's Creek. 
If you recommend Schitt's Creek to any of your friends, there's a good chance you'll accompany it with the caveat, it gets so much better after the first season. And it's absolutely true. The Riches to Rag sitcom had some major growing pains in its uneven first volume, with many critics and viewers alike complaining that the Rose family were just too obnoxious and unlikable for their own good. Though the Roses were supposed to be privileged, out-of-touch assholes to a point, the show still needed to tease out their inner humanity in small ways to convince audiences to keep watching every week. By season two, it became clear that Eugene and Daniel Levy had a much further a handle on the show's tone and the personality of the Rose family. Over the course of the remaining seasons, viewers fell head over heels for the Roses as they drifted further and further from caricatures into well-developed human beings who actually grew. In one of the all-time great glow-up stories for a sitcom, Schitt's Creek's final season ended up performing a record-setting sweep of the Emmys. Yet, had the levies stuck to their original vibe from that wonky first season, it's easy to imagine the show getting the chop relatively quickly. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and any other TV shows that you can think of that were saved by one small tweak. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.